Hi there everyone, you might recognise who I'm with today. It's Bethany the Conservator. And when she told us that she was doing some work here at the Bournemouth Natural Science Society and said we should come along, we were like, yeah, we'll come along. And then when she said she was working on an Egyptian mummy, we were like, we'll be there in two hours. <laughs> so uh, here we are. This is your latest project. This is pretty amazing. Yeah, her name is Tahima. She's an Egyptian mummy. We believe her to be from between the 25th and 26th dynasties. So that's around 700 BC. That makes her about 2,700 years old, which is amazing. Wow. She's been here in the building of the Bournemouth Natural Science Society since the 1920s. Previous to this, she was at the Salisbury Museum. And then previous to that, in 1880, she was in a private collection. Unfortunately, we really don't know what her story is before then, or how she came to the UK. Was Tahima like a queen or a princess or someone really important? Yeah, we believe she was the daughter of a high priest named Hor, and he lived in the ancient city of Thebes, now known as Luxor, which is on the River Nile. Still looking pretty good. For her age, she looks absolutely incredible. There's a lot of surface dirt and dust, and she's also cracking a lot, and that's caused by the environmental fluctuations of where she is. So if it goes from hot to cold and dry to mm. moist around the air, you get these deeper cracks in her substrate and the painted surface too, that's starting to flake off. So I'm here to clean her and to consolidate her. Well, that part looks a bit nicer there. That's because you've already, uh, you've done the business. Yeah. But you've still got work to do here. I know that you do like a good before and after. Yeah, I do. So for that, I've made this little section here this is the dirty area yep. and this is the section now on this side that's been cleaned oh you can see the line there okay the technique that I'm using is a gentle enzymatic treatment uh, that's what I would have suggested otherwise known as human spit <laughs> <laughs> Right. And saliva is actually used in conservation all the time. It's a really gentle cleaning agent. It's 99% water, 1% yeah. enzymes, and it's the enzymes that break down the dirt. So, wow, you weren't joking. Mm. Under the tongue. Is this like a known like technique? Yeah, like, let's do a little section here. This is kind of gross, but really cool. Really effective. You want to use something that's super gentle. So introducing too much water to the surface, that's going to risk swelling the paint, which might make it flake off. There you can see the dirt that it's taken oh, yeah, off. Yeah, 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 it's coming off. Yeah. And I keep checking the swabs regularly just to make sure I'm not lifting any pigment. How would you know if you were lifting pigment? You would just notice that it, the colour of the swab would start going from grey to the colour of the substrate, so in this case yellow. We have a record of her being conserved previously and there being some tests undertaken on her. We think the areas that were cleaned was this section and this area here. And unfortunately the techniques they've used, you can see you've lost a lot of the colour. If you compare this side of Newt to this side here. We've got this beautiful red pigment there and we've lost a lot of that on this side, demonstrating just how fragile this object is. You pointed out these cracks before. Yeah. Is, there, is there anything you can do about that? So we'll be injecting a consolidant, which is an acrylic resin, into these cracks to basically strengthen them and just prevent them getting any worse. And repainting these areas, it just seems a bit aesthetic. You want her to still look the age that she is. You just don't want the deterioration to get any worse. Is there a mummy in there? So, or? Yeah, she is in here. Her skeleton is in there. She's wrapped in multiple layers of linen. Yeah. Uh, we have a photo of her here. So that's what she looked like in the 70s. She's got this gorgeous beaded shawl, oh, uh, yeah. a small sample of which we have in a display case over there. 2009 was the most recent CT scan. They took her to Bournemouth Hospital and they made some really amazing discoveries. The first being that we initially thought she was a younger woman of around 20, but the CT scan showed us that her skull, the teeth were in really, really bad condition. She had lots of abscesses and losses. From that, we thought that she was a lot older, maybe between 35 and 55, which for an Egyptian is quite old. We also learnt that her spine had been broken in two places, which sort of indicates that she was compacted to fit in this coffin, which leads me on to the fact we aren't in entirely sure this was her coffin originally. It may have been designed for someone else. Okay, and then they sort of squeezed her in maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. another indication of this is this section here. We have Tahima, and this is Osiris and Isis, who were the gods of the underworld. What's suspicious about this painting is that this painting style is very different to this painting style. The lines are a lot thicker, and it almost looks like someone may have been erased there, and she might have been painted over. She's been photoshopped in. Yeah. <laughs> So these sections here also would have had some identification on them and they've also been erased in the section on this side too. You won't take the lid off in doing your work? You will never see the mummy? I would like to. We do want to take the lid off of the coffin so we can check for insect pests. I want to yeah. be here when that happens. Okay. If you look through this little crack here actually in the coffin, you can see her linen. I can. I can see the linen yeah. there. And look, all we have to do is just lift that up. I think we'll probably be escorted from the premises <laughs> though if we do that.
It does seem, Bethany, that some of whatever is on here has come away here and is giving us a bit of, of a glimpse into what the coffin's made of. Yeah, so the coffin is several layers. First there's the wood substrate, and then on top of that is like a gesso plaster that's been bulked out with natural fibres. And then on top of that is the linen, and then that's been painted on. So you can see oh. just how vulnerable it is. How do you feel when you're doing this? Yeah. Does, it, does it just become Honored. like, oh, work? Or are you always going, oh my god, no. this is amazing? And even the more we clean, we're discovering new parts of the images and the depictions of the gods and writing along the side so it's helping to contribute to working out her story and yeah bringing her to life back to life yeah well <laughs> not actually back to life that would be a bit weird <laughs> the, uh, we should point out normally if you just come along to the society you can't just walk up to it like this this is there is normally a case over it this yeah. is like we're being given a special look today We've built a team called Team Tahima, which is myself and our resident Egyptologist and a few other volunteers who are putting more hours into researching Tahima and her story. We're raising money to purchase her a new case, but we also want to do a refurbishment of the entire Egyptology collections here because they are really significant and absolutely incredible. Thank you for giving us this special look. and maybe welcome. thanks for coming. That's all right. Hopefully we'll come back later and have a look. A, when it's all clean and shiny and lovely, and B, when you take the lid off okay. and we get to have a look up close. Yeah, definitely. All right. I'd like to show you an interesting way to use today's episode sponsor, Hover. Now you probably know Hover is a domain registrar, a place where you can go and buy domain names. And I've entered the name of today's mummy, Tahima. Now as you can see, there are lots of domains available. Dot mom? I don't know. In the end, I went for the classic dot com. And ultimately, if I make a website, I could attach that hover registered domain. It's super easy. But in the absence of a website, you can still use it in some really clever ways. I'm going to forward this domain to the fundraising website that's been created for the mummy restoration and display. It's this easy. And now you could tell someone, hey, why don't you go to tahima.com? And when they put it in, straight away, they'll land on the fundraising page. Later, if you created a new website or you wanted to send people somewhere else, you could change that forward. You could change it to a new museum page. You could change it to this video on YouTube. I register all my domains with Hover, and you can too. Go to hover.com slash objectivity. Not only does that tell Hover you heard about them here, but you'll get 10% off your first purchase. 10%. What more could you ask? Well, I guess you could ask for 15%, but 10% is pretty good. Hover.com slash objectivity. There's a quite a few conservation issues with the specimen. When we found it in storage, it was really dusty and dirty. And there was a lot of surface dirt that had stuck to the fur. There's also quite a few areas of restoration, which has been done at an undisclosed time with unknown materials. How about you take me on a little tour then of yeah. this thylacine and you show me some of the things that you're unhappy with.